I'm running across the pavement, all you can see is the pavement moving, you hear my footsteps. How do you lead someone to want to keep watching to find out why the thing they're watching now is happening? Cody Warner is a filmmaker and storyteller who made his break onto the YouTube creator scene in 2018 by releasing a daily vlog for a full year. Through his stories, he manages to capture adventure in the everyday. <laughs> How does he get his audience so invested? How does he keep them hanging on? I got this comment. So one interesting component of a story is something called an open loop. An open loop is anything that creates curiosity in the viewer. There's a million different ways to open loops, like asking a question, showing something randomly weird but interesting and intriguing that makes the person wonder like, well, what is that and why did you show it and, and why is it there and what's it for and what's gonna happen with it and is that relevant? Once you understand what an open loop is, you start seeing it more and more used uh, all throughout all different types of storytelling. Looking back at the videos that I've created over the years, there's one that I found that's loaded with open loops. One of my most compelling open loops that ever introduced itself in one of my vlogs, I was daily vlogging, 2018, uh, was the story of keys that I found on the ground outside of the market here in Harrisburg. Uh-oh, I just accidentally got into an adventure. It really sidetracked my whole plan for what that vlog was supposed to be about, but as soon as I saw the keys on the ground, I was like, this is too good of an adventure, too good of an open loop to, to walk away from. He found the keys, is he going to find the owner of these keys? Also, you know, just wanting to be a good person. I wanted, I didn't want someone to uh, not be able to get into their car. I didn't want someone else bad to take the keys and steal the car. Like there were just so many questions that I had as a person um, that, I, that I then brought into the vlog. I found these keys on the ground and then, now I kind of feel like I have to wait here until the person who they belong to comes back. But I don't really have enough time to do this. So the first loop that I opened in this video is the laughter, kind of the questioning behind, I have to do this side mission in my life, return these keys. Is that going to derail the rest of my day so I don't get anything that I was planning to get done, done? If I could have gotten into this adventure on some other day, it would have been a better, it would have been better. But I, I, I really don't have the time to stay here and give these people their keys back. But they got a kid's seat in the back of their car, they're from New York. Ah, this is a tough situation. And then all of these other kind of minor loops uh, open back up. I could just put them in the car and leave it unlocked. What if someone steals their car? I'm thinking I could look at their registration in the glove box and then like look them up on Facebook or LinkedIn and message them and be like, I have your keys, I'm by your car. I'm sure they would be happy, but they'd also kind of be like, did you get in my car? I'm gonna have to take this to Facebook. I need, I need advice. Ah, I deleted the Facebook app from my phone this morning so that I wasn't getting on Facebook on my phone. Okay, let me go reinstall Facebook. Facebook won't download because I don't have Wi-Fi. I go into a, a coffee shop, I ask them to make an announcement. They don't, they're not able to make an announcement. You know, maybe this person's in the Midtown Scholar, which is right across the street, and they probably have like a, an announcer thing. Do you have one of those things that makes an announcement to the whole store? Okay. They didn't have a PA system like I, you know, like I was talking about, but she gave me an idea by doing what she did, which was I didn't have a card, so I told her to write down my phone number, and then I realized I could just write my phone number down and like put a note on the car. That's what I'm gonna do. Now I need tape though. I need to like laminate this post-it note because it's gonna like melt on their car because of the weather. They didn't have any tape at the Midtown Scholar, so I gotta, gotta find some tape in the market. Where do you think is the best place to find tape in this market, like, uh, like packing tape or scotch tape. I do not have any tape. And then at some point in the vlog, and this created a, a bit of cognitive dissonance in my head, I find the owner of the keys. 
Is this you, Subaru? And that closes all of these loops. Like now this adventure is over. Yes. I found your, uh, I found your keys. Oh wow, thank you so much. Sure. What was it? Yeah, yeah, you got it. Mission accomplished. One of the main things that you want is for someone to watch to the end. And an open loop, especially when the loop is not closed until the end of a piece of content, is a great way to get people to watch to the end of the video. So when you look at the analytics of this Lost Keys video on my YouTube channel, this is, this is what you wanna see <laughs> when it comes to analytics. There's a dip, there's always a dip at the beginning. And then the line just goes straight across. You see a little bit of a spike there at the end because that's when people are tuning back in, the ones who are skipping. Um, and then there's that drop off when I'm probably closing up the video. Does it affect audience retention? 100% it does. Open loops are a powerful tool for audience retention. I'm gonna have to take this to Facebook. I need, I need advice. So instead of just going to Facebook and seeking advice, remembering to record a little segment that says, I'm gonna go to Facebook and ask what to do, as opposed to just doing it and saying, I found this on Facebook. Do you see the difference? It's only slight, but it's like, one way, you're just giving away what you know. Another way, you're leading someone to want to find out what you know. Sometimes it's about editing decisions. I see this spot where I'm looking down and I look up, it's like you can see that I had the idea, but then cut. It's those sort of little decisions that you can use to create tension in the edit. The best way to kind of identify and train yourself to know, okay, maybe this is a potential open loop, maybe this is a potential storytelling uh, component, is to really watch a lot of vlogs, watch a lot of movies, watch a lot of stuff that you really like, and, and think about why you like it, and why did it make you curious, and, and what were they doing in their good stuff. You start to recognize those patterns. You start to just see, okay, that would make an interesting piece. And you're able to kind of lead your content in that direction because you lead your life in that direction. So it's really pattern recognition. Storytelling is an extremely powerful way to just make people empathize. You can see it, you can feel it, you're immersed in it, you're engaged with it. I love being a storyteller because I love making people feel a certain way. For me, storytelling, specifically storytelling through video, is the way to do that, and, uh, and yeah, that, that's why I love it.